What is up guys, Rick Kakis here. Thank you so much for stopping by and today, early this morning, too early if you ask me, Bungie released a brand new official trailer for Season of the Worthy, showcasing some brand new gameplay, new exotics, new loot, tons and tons of stuff. But not only that, a little while after, they officially updated their website and are showing off exactly what is coming, what is available to both paying and free players during Season of the Worthy. This is the official unveiling and announcement of this new season. We have a ton of information to go over, so let's get started. And we are going to start here with that brand new trailer. Let's take a look at it and dissect it. So it starts out with the premise of this season. The Cabal were defeated at the Sundial, they get desperate, so they go to the Almighty, which is that massive spaceship that was sucking up the sun in the original campaign, and disable the engines and are letting it kind of drift towards Earth to crash land and presumably kill everyone. So, to prevent this, we have to arm our old Warmind friend, Rasputin. So, there's a bunch of Warmind-themed things going on here. Firstly, look at this guy. We have this kind of robotic Warmind enemy-looking guy. Is this a new enemy faction, or is it maybe just a one-off boss? Or is it maybe just something in a cinematic? I don't know, but that is crazy! Moving on from there, we see this warlock with two swords equipped. At first, I was so excited. I was like, oh my gosh, is Bungie finally expanding what can be possible for a melee weapon? But I think this is just a cool new finisher, so keep that in mind. We also have another dope finisher here uh, from the Titan in the background as well. Okay, then Bungie talks about new exotics. The first one they show off is this weird looking gun here. But actually, we know all about this. Let's stop the trailer, let's go to the website. This is the brand new featured exotic for this season, so this is going to be available either for paying players right off the bat, or for new free-to-play players at level 35, and it's called the Tommy's Matchbook. The description says, Tommy the Ghost presents us with a token of goodwill. Sure, it might just be a match, but all a guardian needs to light up the darkness is a spark. And we see it shooting later in the trailer, and it appears to be a Tommy gun. Like, a machine gun or a submachine gun in this case, fully automatic, super fast rate of fire, so excited to see this one in action. Now, right after that, however, we do see a machine gun being raised very slowly out of the darkness. This thing looking wild. This, I mean, I would think maybe this is the Xenophage. It's that bulky and chunky, but it's in the new exotic section. So I assume this is a new exotic machine gun coming with this season as well. We really don't know too much about it. It isn't really mentioned or showcased on the website either. It's just in this one little clip. So again, excited for that. But right after that, we see another new exotic, or should I say, returning exotic, because this is the fourth horseman exotic shotgun from Destiny 1. Now, for those unfamiliar, this thing was kind of a powerhouse, and its exotic perk was basically the fact that it just had four barrels and fired at something like eight to nine hundred rounds per minute for a shotgun, just for those four rounds. So you'd hold the trigger, I believe, and then you would just pump out all these rounds unbelievably fast, and then that would be it, you'd have to reload. But because of that massive rate of fire, the DPS from this thing in that short burst was unbelievable. You could do certain tricky things with this shotgun to output so much damage. And we do see a closer look of this thing right here. This is on the website, and underneath it actually it says requires Seasons Pass. So this is likely a one of the new exotic quest reward weapons coming next season. Next up, it says empower every ally, new activities, and then it shows some Warmind looking stuff. We see a warlock here running with an orb, as is tradition in Destiny 2 activities at this point. Then we see, what the heck is this? Some like goal post up in the air. There's a guy on his sparrow. There's another guy throwing a ball like at this goal post. So there's some pretty crazy stuff going on here. Now what exactly is this stuff? Well, let's go back to the website to see exactly what's going on. So, they're actually Seraph Towers. Join your fellow Guardians and prepare Rasputin's defenses in shared public events. 
And it of course looks like there is gear associated with this event. In fact, the seasonal gear set, uh, armor set, is called Seraph Armor. Here is a picture of all three guardians utilizing Seraph Armor and that hunter helmet. Come on, that's amazing. Now going back to the trailer, we have Flex Every Skill, New Pinnacle PvP Challenge, and this is of course Trials of Osiris. So you pretty much know everything about this activity. It is going to be free to play, so all players can access Trials of Osiris. You simply need to be a 960 light to enter. So we do have the OG armor and presumably weapons 2 returning from the original uh, gear set in Destiny 1. So Trials, 3v3 elimination, a lot of uh, PvPers have been just desperate for this to return, and it looks like it is. Moving on from there, we see the Tommy's Matchbook in full force shooting incredibly fast. We then see a warlock with what appears to be a Valkyrie, but they're on the moon. So the Valkyrie was a key feature of the old Warmind related public events escalation protocol. So it makes sense that those are going to be utilized in the new Seraph events. We also have a very quick clip here, but we do see a fallen champion here. So this is maybe like a barrier champion and it does show that it's Fallen's turn in the limelight to be the champions for these events. Alright, so learned a little bit in that trailer, but you may be wondering what exactly, exactly is coming in the season? Well, let's find out. So Bungie outlined what is available to Seasons Pass owners and free-to-play players. So firstly, for Seasons Pass owners, you get the weekly Rasputin challenges, you get legendary Lost Sectors, you get new exotic quest lines, instantly unlock the 7th Seraph armor sets for each class, instantly unlock the exotic auto rifle Tommy's matchbook, new triumphs, bounties, and seasonal lore books, exotic emote, ghost, ornament, and finisher, all XP gains are increased throughout the season, additional seasons pass rewards to unlock, and all free Destiny 2 content is also included. Let's move over to the free-to-play players. They are going to be able to defend the last city from the Red Legion by powering up Rasputin, new Seraph Tower public events and bunker activities, Trials of Osiris returns every weekend, minimum 960 power again, seasonal artifact, you can upgrade the Warmind, I'm not even gonna bother pronouncing that, to earn seasonal gear mods, rank up, to unlock this seasonal armor set 7th Seraph and rank up to unlock the Tommy's matchbook. Now something that stood out to me is the wording powering up Rasputin. Are you simply leveling him up on your own accord similar to ranking up an obelisk or is there going to be another community event similar to what is currently happening and the Imperium Foundation? Are we going to have Stonks 2.0? Now, when is that content coming? Well, we have the new seasonal calendar right here. So, March 10th, the launch of the season, we have the Seraph Tower event, a new PvE activity, new legendary weapons and armor. And by the way, this seems to be the legendary weapon set associated with this event. So we have a sidearm, a machine gun, an assault rifle or auto rifle, and then a hand cannon. But back to the calendar, then we have on March 13th, the new endgame PvP activity, Trials of Osiris. So that first weekend, Trials launches, and it has its own set of weapons and armor as well. Then on March 10th and March 21st, we have the Seraph Bunker, EDZ, and Moon, legendary Lost Sectors. So what the heck are these bunkers? Well, we have a little bit of a blurb on it here saying, uh, Bounties and bunkers rise to Rasputin's challenge and clear bunkers throughout the system to re-establish communication with the war mine. So hopefully they'll have some cool rewards associated with it. Then moving on from there, on April 21st, we have the Grandmaster Ordeal, a new Nightfall Strike difficulty. So this is even more difficult than the current 980 Nightfalls, and we can see there's a new seal associated with this and end game rewards. Now, what are those rewards? Is it just more of what you're getting in the 980, like you're getting two Ascendant Shards instead of one, stuff like that? That remains to be seen. 
but also on April 21st launching and going to May 11th, we have Guardian Games, free event for all players. So it's a class competition, new legendary armor. And we can see by this picture, there is a banner for Titans, then Warlocks, then Hunters. So is it literally pitching all of the Titan mains and the Warlock mains and the Hunter mains against each other in some sort of competition to see who gets the most? That would be hilarious. Just, just the memes from that would be definitely worth it. I'm very interested about what that's all about. Moving on from there, on April 7th, we have Seraph Bunkers for IO. And so guys, that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed, found this informative, and if you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content so much to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.